viewer notice, this is just a creepypasta. It's just for the sake of scaring you. Do not worry about it. The bitter cold gust ripped through the thermal underwear he wore underneath his camouflage, biting into his very bones. He had climbed into his tree stand, about thirty feet up a yellow-leafed cottonwood, and had huddled with his knees to his chest to fight to fight the freeze. As he scanned the open field in the midst of the woods, the hunter admired the beauty of the frost-tipped grass that reflected the full moon setting in the early morning. He thought he loved this time of year, but rumors of unexplained occurrences and a thick fog seen in the distance inching its way closer advised him that he would not be out there long. As the glowing moon dipped under the horizon opposite of the arriving fog, the hunter decided to pursue the scenery one last time before quitting the hunt or risk getting lost in the fog. In the final sweep, his pulse quickened. He noticed an odd silhouette against the fog about 200 yards to his front left. The twilight made his unaided eyesight untrustworthy, so he decided to put his binoculars to his stubbled face. The magnified black figure had many details and shadowed darkness, but he could see the outline of the beast, the hoofed feet connected to what seemed to be abnormally long legs. The alarmed fingers wisped in the wind and the breeze, but he came to a pointy end. Its stretched arms were connected to its to a thin torso, but the muscles bulged from its shoulders. As the hunter scanned up the profile, he distinguished the ears and the way they came to a point half a foot up of its head. The only colors the creature reflected were white teeth that had as many edges as a bandsaw blade producing a menacing smile and thid, blood-red slits where pupiled eyes normally were. Just as the hunter gathered all of this information in the span of about ten seconds, the thing disappeared into the overcoming fog. He slowly lowered his binoculars. The town wouldn't believe that he had actually seen what was causing all the unexplained occurrences. He now knew how disfigured, gory, strange, uh, strange and stray animals dotted the main street after a full moon night. He now knew how a whole herd of cattle had been mutilated, their flesh strewn across the bloody field, their bones shattered into a million pieces like broken glass. He now knew how a group of young grade schoolers taking a field trip to a quaint pumpkin patch had been mauled by what seemed to be a bear in a perilous part of the country, the bus offering no protection as it ended up like a crushed pop can. Even though he knew the sun was peeking over the horizon, it only created an eerie glow through the fog. He decided to get down from the cottonwood, but as he looked down from his tree stand, he noticed the fog had crept to where he couldn't see the ground. He thought he might stay as quiet as a graveyard in his tree stand, but the crashing of a fallen tree somewhere in the fog and the stench of death permitting in his surroundings made him think differently and quickly. The deafening break of silence came opposite of the place his vehicle was parked, so he quickly climbed down the tree, leaving everything but his gun. As soon as he hit the ground, a sharp pain shot from one shoulder to the other, causing him to lose his balance. He turned around as he fell and pulled the trigger at whatever was behind him, but the gun was still in his safety. It wouldn't have mattered if the rifle had fired because the pain produced would have disappeared into the mist. He picked himself up off the ground and noticed a stark red streak melting the frost of the ground. He made his mind up as he turned his safety off and that he wouldn't be the next unexplained uh, occurrence and hurried into the direction of his truck. The sweat on his brow only amplified the cold. Only as leaves crunched under his boots, he could hear branches cracking from all directions in the mystifying fog. One loud snap only came from a few feet away from him. And he stopped to aim his gun into the haze. The hush that surrounded him as he aimed stopped his warm blood from flowing through his body, making him ice cold with the calm over the next few achingly long seconds. He became somewhat hopeful, but he just lowered the gun. Somehow soundlessly came from his right and knocked him clean off his feet. The rifle flying into the air into the unknown mist. A sting went from his knee to his brain, making him scream in pain, but also making him become more desperate. With a limp, he began, he began in the direction of what he thought was his truck. The fog seemingly clearing as the sun warmed the day. He couldn't hear anything besides his own heavy breathing, taking in the putrefying smell. 
He only had a short few feet from his truck when a, when the black beast towered over him in his path. A demonic hand swept across his face, knocking him down to the ground. His terrified cries, magnifying each time the sound of crushing bones echoed, uh, echoed off the trees. The monster cut through the hunter's skin and severed the veins as easily as fresh, a uh, freshly sharp bandsaw blade cutting into butchered meat. With one violent crack, the sounds disappeared into, with the fog. Now you may be wondering how I know every detail of this occurrence. The last surviving human did die, didn't he? You see, I was watching the whole thing. I looked down from my solitary perch as my monster, yes, my monster, crunched and swallowed the last bone as his back bristled. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because the creature looked at me one time with his diopric red eyes, looked deep into his creator's soul, licked the last drop of blood from his lips, slowly turning into the thick forest and was never seen again. I should have known what, hap what would happen when I put the hooves of a dead goat, the wings of a dead bat, the teeth of a dead crocodile, the muscle fibers of a dead, crazed gorilla, and drops of my very own blood into the fire. My basement instantly smelled of the most decaying death you can imagine. The beast that limped from the fire had a meanness about it, but it obeyed my every command. It grew evil with each, com with each act, starting with killing the dog that kept me up at night, to eliminating my neighbor's cattle herd. Then it started to do things I didn't tell it to do. I awoke a fortnight ago to him getting out of his cage and followed him to the field of death, only watching because I knew my efforts could not save the hunter. Now, though, I don't know where it is. I feel like it's always being hunting, waiting for the opportune moment to kill again. It may be the thing that makes you wonder what's in the cellar in the backyard or in the basement of your house. It may be brief disturbance when you think something is peering around the corner, waiting to pounce when you least expect it. It may be the thing you think you see in the mirror when you look at your reflection and notice something stir behind you. It may cause the brief cold tingling sensation along your spine that you are feeling at this very moment. But I have to quit writing, because it may be the thing that is breathing its warm, putrid breath on my neck right now. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this very weird creepypasta. I've been kind of obsessed with creepypastas lately. Really sorry about all the fuck-ups I've had during this. Really thanks for all of you guys that were sticking to it to the very end. And if you guys want, comment down below if you want a shout-out. I'll give you guys a shout-out in the next video. Bye!